Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. And I'm here to bring you a presentation. <laughs> We're not doing an online paper crafting class today. We have a special presentation today, um, which is why it's a couple days delayed. Normally I go live on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Central Time, but today it's Wednesday, no, it's Friday, April 7th, 2023 at 11 a.m. Central Time. And we're coming live on this day because Stampin' Up! is doing what's called a color refresh. So we, I'm here to present to you the 2023 color refresh. I'm so excited. Now in 2013, they did a color refresh and um, it was a really big to do. We were so excited because we were finally getting some um, more up-to-date colors, things that coordinated a little bit better, that sort of thing. Then in 2018, they did what was called a color revamp. Um, I don't remember exactly the difference between the two, but basically it was probably like a bigger um, change around. And then um, it just makes sense because another five years later in 2023, we're doing the color refresh again. So maybe 2028, who knows? <laughs> Anyways, um, Stampin' Up! prioritizes providing compelling, uh, selection of high priority, I'm sorry, high quality, I'm reading this, high quality craft supplies in coordinating colors and designs. I mean, they really do try to keep up to date and make wonderful stuff that coordinates and is really intriguing to all of us, right? That means that they have to evaluate and constantly um, refresh their current products, but it also includes color refreshes. And that's why they're doing that this year. Why do colors retire? Um, why do certain colors retire? Well, because um, oftentimes certain colors have low sales. They're just not something that people are buying anymore. Um, the trends, people are, you know, keeping up with the trends. And so Stampin' Up! needs to do that as, uh, as well. And then, of course, coordination within their products. So um, product line strategy is what they call it. So those are the three basic reasons. By the way, um, I want you to give a big welcome to um, Lisa Marshall, who is moderating on YouTube today. She moved over from Facebook. Normally she's on Facebook to help me monitor questions there, but she is over on uh, YouTube today because I have a special guest with me here in the studio. Trisha Josephs, you want to come on in so we can see you? <laughs> so Trisha Josephs is with me today. Hey, Trisha. <laughs> And that's the camera, by the way, but I tend to look at that a lot just because that's where we can see everything, right? So welcome to Trisha Joseph. She's going to be here in person with me while I do this. If any video that's live um, has needed extra help, it's this one. The color changes, even when I just share them each year with the new in color family, um, when I need... Uh, to show the new colors. It's just a constant mess. Like I'm sweating by the time that video is done. So Trisha's here with me. She's going to help me pull colors. She's going to help me with remembering things to say about certain colors, hopefully. I mean, this is going to be great. Thank It'll you so fun. much. <laughs> <laughs> so yay. And um, I welcome you to like, I welcome you to subscribe. Um, if you're first time on our, my lives, uh, please come back in the future as well. And if you're logged into your uh, Google account, you can comment while the live is going on. If you're watching on Facebook, hello, hello. Uh, so thank you so much to everybody who's here. Thank you to the new people coming in. Thank you to those of you who have been around forever with me. I love you all. And a big thanks to my moderators, obviously. Also, a big thanks to people who have sent in samples of colors over the years. Um, I'm actually going to try to double my collection. So thank you to those of you who have sent colors in and those of you that have offered already, Cass Turner, um, Karen Andrusik, you have offered to help me find some extras because I'm trying to make two different binders now for the coming years where we have them in color order and them in alphabetical order. So um, hopefully that will help in the future. But Trisha's got her, she's got all the colors too. And um, so she'll, she'll be able to supplement when we need them. <laughs> um, and it's funny, those of you that have been with me on these color uh, changes type videos or whatever, color comparison videos, you've seen it change throughout the years. It's, it's getting better and better, hopefully. Um, and I wanna give a big shout out to Brina, uh, Brina Bergen. She is a fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrator who is 
so knowledgeable in colors. Um, she's got this whole scientific mathematical chart thing going on. I'm going to link to her blog. So in my blog post with the recording of this live and with photographs and um, digital color images, the hex colors, all that stuff, when that goes live tomorrow morning, you'll be able to link to her blog, which will also have information in it that's just amazing it's incredible to see what she has shared so she's given me lots of education a few of a few others have also given me education in like the words chroma and saturation and oh my gosh i probably won't remember them as we go but i am learning so much as you share with me as well so thank you to brina and everybody else um okay let's move over to the desktop really quick because i have a beautiful publication to share with you. Look at this. I can share the cover. I can't open it up yet because it is not a live catalog yet. This is the new, the upcoming new 2023 through 2024 annual catalog. And this is where the refresh of the colors will begin on May 2nd. Um, let me bring in for you some products. This is one of our newer colors, as a lot of you have known, um, when we had that mini stamp and cut and emboss machine promotion going on, Boho Blue was announced early. It's one of our newer colors. When you get your ink pads, there are these little labels on the back, and you can peel the whole thing off if you want to, but do you see this? Look at, they're all like individual little labels. So all of these pieces back here can come off and help you to label your pad. I like to put one across the front here on the bottom in this little section. It's like a quarter of an inch wide. Um, also, I've seen people put them along the sides here, so you could do that. You could also, if you want to, stick them inside your pad here. So when your pad is open, you can either have a color strip here or a color strip here or here, whatever, um, but that way you know what color it is when your pad is open. So how do you do that? Well, again, we have the name of the color, which is what I usually put on the front. But this year, we've also got our ink pads, our newer ink pads come with two in English. So if you want to, you can also have the name. Normally, I've just taken the one on the very bottom, which is just a blank strip. So you've got like three if you're using the English language, and then there's a couple other languages there. When you get your ink pads, it's recommended that you buy your reinker at the same time. Um, some of us may have noticed that over the years there have been some visual changes like my Mary Merlot, Cherry Cobbler, um, certain ink pads sometimes start to have this crystallization on the surface and they're not guaranteed for life, okay? So ink pads do not stay around forever and ever and ever, although you could probably use them for an ever and ever and ever if you want to. I said that wrong. Anyways, um, but just so you know, when they manufacture a set of inks to fill an ink pad and an ink refill, um, there might be a slight change down the road. Like months from now, we might have to, they might have to do something chemically to that ink. And then, of course, they're filling the ink pads and the refills again. So it's recommended that you buy them at the same time because if there's a slight difference in the ink that's going onto your pad, they're wondering, it's a, it's a theory right now, if that is... Um, helping to produce some of that crystallization. So just in the future, moving forward, if you can do that. Okay, the Boho Blue has blends markers, yippee skippy. Um, gosh, we have some beautiful ribbon. It's called uh, textured ribbon. It's gorgeous. Um, we also have lots of other things, like this is one of the new embellishments. It's called the 2023 through 25 in color dots very pretty glossy looking dots in the in colors. So now you're seeing a peak of all the in colors, right? And then we've got markers, of course. Now there's lots of other things like designer paper um, will have the boho blue in it. Uh, I'm sure that there will be other things, maybe other ribbons, maybe other embellishments. So watch for colors to be added into lots of, um, of the new products. The markers have changed. I'm gonna grab an older marker here. Um, let me just grab this one. This is the Parakeet Party um, older marker, and you can see that it has a brush tip just like the newer markers. But there's the difference, okay? You don't have that color showing on the inside as much. It's, it's a black 
barrel all the way through. On the other end though, look at this. So this is the difference. Well, there's other differences obviously, like the newer ones are a little bit shorter. This is the fine tip on the older markers. And I have to tell you, I have to admit that sometimes I have a hard time getting the ink to come out of there. But the new tips have a bullet tip on them. See that? So, and they're actually very fine to write with. A super fine bullet tip. It's, um, here, let me just grab some paper here so you can see. Totally thin line, right? So it's, it's awesome. It's going to be much better, I believe, for lasting and working and blah, blah, blah. So if you've been frustrated with your stamp and write markers in the past, these newer configurations, I think, are going to be a nice improvement. All right, so we're going to toss this stuff off to the side now that I've kind of introduced you to colors and some of the new things are happening with them. I love my catch-all table. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and start. There are 11 core colors that are retiring. Okay, so here we go. In the brights, we have Gorgeous Grape, Coastal Cabana, Granny Apple Green, Daffodil Delight, Flirty Flamingo, Melon Mambo, Poppy Parade. We also have Mango Melody, Bermuda Bay, Pacific Point. These are the three colors that are leaving in the brights. I've marked all the currently current colors with a little post-it uh, piece of tape here. So anything that has that tape on it throughout the live, you'll know is currently current. Not necessarily on May 2nd, but currently it's current, okay? So that's, these are the three that are leaving. Then we've got um, from the uh, Subtles, how are we doing so far, Trisha? Am I doing okay? <laughs> From the Subtles, we have Highland Heather, Balmy Blue, Pool Party, Soft Sea Foam, Petal Pink, Calypso Coral, right? We also have Mint Macaron, Pear Pizzazz, So Saffron, and Blushing Bride. These are the colors that are leaving. Betty really likes the new tip. I do too. I think it's an awesome new tip. Okay, so these colors are staying. These colors are leaving. Then we've got from the Regals. So, so far we have what? Three and four, right? Okay. From the Regals, we have Night of Navy, Mossy Meadow, Basic Gray, Smoky Slate, Early Espresso, Crumb Cake, and Gray Granite. We also have Mary Merlot, Soft Suede, and Sahara Sand. Say goodbye to those. They are leaving. Are, are any of you mourning these colors that are leaving? I have to tell you, this one, I know, you know, it may not be a popular one for other people, but I loved Mango Melody, so it's going to be sad for me to see that go, but I will deal. <laughs> All right, from the, um, we're now on to the Regals. We have Blackberry Bliss, Shaded Spruce, Garden Green, Old Olive, Crushed Curry, Pumpkin Pie, Cajun Craze, Real Red, and Cherry Cobbler. Those are all staying, but you'll need to say goodbye to Rich Razzleberry. Sorry about that. I know some of you have mourned that one leaving too. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven colors from the core collection that are leaving. All right. I'm going to hand these. I don't know if I need to hand them over to you. I'm just going to give them to you anyways. <laughs> um, actually, let's hang on to these. Let's keep okay. these here just because that way in case we need to do something with. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. We're just talking amongst ourselves here. Um, for the colors that are, what do you want to call it? Like just basics, I guess. Very vanilla, basic white, basic black are remaining but we are gonna say goodbye to shimmery white. So, sorry about that. Alrighty, I'm gonna give you that one. And then, um, then we have in color collections. This one's sticking around because it just started last year and our in color collections stick around for a whole two years. So Sweet Sorbet, Parakeet Party, Orchid Oasis, Starry Sky, and Tahitian Tide are staying. Okay. But in the next set of colors, we have 
Soft Succulent, Evening Evergreen, Polished Pink, Pale Papaya, oops, there we go, and Fresh Freesia. And they are all officially saying goodbye, but this one is like a special color right now. This one is going through one of those revolving doors and never really getting to the outside sidewalk. It's going to do a little spin around and it's going to come back in and it's not going to be an in color anymore. It's going to become a core color. So really when you could hear people say there's 16 colors leaving and 16 colors coming, or you could say there's 15 colors leaving and 15 colors coming because this is that one exception that's a little bit different. All right. I love it. You guys are saying what your favorite colors are. You're saying sob stories about colors that are leaving, but Hopefully you're also excited about ones that are staying because we do have a lot of great colors that are staying. All right, this one goes here and I don't need these in here. These neutral or the basics we don't really need, right? Okay, so I still got my little groupings of colors here that uh, Trisha may need to refer to again, although she's got a whole set of colors over here that she can work with. So let's make sure I'm doing this right here. Um, now we have shifts. So we're gonna take the colors that I just handed her <laughs> and I'm going to show you. Oh no, not the colors that I just handed you. They're from here. Sorry. Gorgeous grape is special. So is, um, <laughs> I'm going to show you three special colors. We have three special colors, pumpkin pie and also blackberry bliss. There we go. These are the three special colors because they are shifting. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here so you can see a little closer. So these three colors, even though they're staying, you might be, get confused when you first see the catalog because they're shifting to new families. So instead of these two being in the regals anymore, um, they are gonna to move to different families. This one's going to the brights, back to the brights. Remember it used to be in the brights a while ago? And then this one's going to the neutrals. <laughs> <laughs> pretty darn cool this one that was in the brights is going to the regals so I'm just gonna shove those into their new families here this one's going to this one and this one's going to this one there we go all right so that's gonna leave space for three more brights two more neutrals two more regals and four subtles 11 colors in the core are leaving that number that I just said, though, if you add that up, that makes 11. Alrighty, I think I went through all of my notes here for that. <laughs> um, all right, then we add that 11 to the five that are going from the in colors that are leaving. We're gonna just count Fresh Freesia in there right now, okay? So pretend it's leaving, just temporarily. So that's 16 colors. And of the 16 that are leaving, now we need to bring 16 back in. So the 16 that are coming in are gonna be, <laughs> I hope I'm still doing this right. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. The 16 that are coming in, I'm sorry, yeah, the 16. There are seven returning colors. So there's Fresh Freesia again. These are returning colors. These are colors that used to be in colors in the past. Um, Blueberry Bushel was 2018 through 20. Lemon Lime Twist, and I got this information from Trisha, by the way. Thank you, Trisha. Um, Lemon Lime Twist is 2017 through 19. Berry Burst is also 2017 through 19. Pretty Peacock was from 2019 through 21. Lost Lagoon was from 2014 through 16. And Misty Moonlight was 2020 through 21. And you know this one, what that one's from. So these are the seven that are returning. So 16 take away seven is nine. So we have nine new colors. We have these colors, which are completely new colors coming into the core grouping. So nine take away four is five more left. I love math, you guys. I'm sorry, I have to think of this mathematically when I do it. And these are the new in color family. So a big welcome, and you can go ahead and clap where you're at, but we won't hear you. Um, these are the new colors coming in. <laughs> So, yay! All right, so let's go through these now and let's do some color comparisons. All right, let's see if I can keep those all in their little stacks. Um, 
I think I did it. I think I did it, Trisha. I think you covered all of those. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to move this sheet off to the side, and I'm going to rely on her. Um, if I want to do what? Say the names of those new ones. Oh, yeah, the names of the new ones. <laughs> okay, but this is funny, because this is what I had to do. I'm going to bring you guys over to the computer really quick. All right. So you see this? I pronounced this incorrectly last night when we did a live to our team. So I had to tell myself, okay, let's make sure we know how to say this. Now I'm going to guess before I play this, but Azure. Okay, let's see if I'm right. Oh, of course I have my sound off. Azure. Yay. All right, I'm bringing you back to the desktop now. So I'm, I'm smart now. That's good. Okay, and I printed off something on my printer. Do you want to go grab it? <laughs> it's the listing of the colors that we're going to pair up that we initially kind of got together from, oh gosh, uh, Brina Bergen gave me some suggestions. I looked on past blog posts for colors that I've compared with these colors in the past. Uh, I also looked at Claire Daly, who is another demonstrator. She did some color comparisons and I just pulled some colors out that we might want to look at first, but you can shout out some colors and Trisha and I are going to try to see what you say and maybe pull those out too and see what happens, okay? Yes, I heard, I saw Kathy's comment. Um, they're a little more mellow. She used the word somber. I don't know if that's real positive though. <laughs> uh, earthy, there we go. They're earthy. And you know what? This is very trendy stuff though. So if you look out there in the world where there's um, clothing and, and purses and like these are colors that are super popular right now. So yay, at least Stampin' Up's keeping up with that, right? All right. We have a real quick question we should address. Can okay. you still buy some of the colors that are retiring? You can buy some of the colors that are retiring. <laughs> um, when they were announced on the 28th, 29th, somewhere 20th, in there? Yeah. 29th. Um, when, the, when the retiring products were announced on the 29th, a lot of people who did not worry about getting sale prices, which started on the 4th of April, they started buying them up. So there were some things that were already sold out by the time the sale prices on a lot of these retiring products came into play a few days back. So what you want to do is go to the online store. I'm going to show you how to get there right now, since that was a good question that was addressed. So when you're in the online store, this is what it looks like when you're there on a, on a desktop or laptop. You're going to go to um, specials and you're going to click on last chance products. Okay, when you're there, you can either scroll through all this stuff and see everything that's leaving that's still available. Or you can type in a color in the search bar up here. There's a search bar in the top. Um, you can also click on a color, like you can hover over something. So we know that pale papaya is leaving. Let's just see what's left. Is that pale papaya? Yeah. So what's left in pale papaya, it looks like the stamp pad, the cardstock, the blends are still available, but the reinker that I did know sold out, it sold out already. So just know that certain things are selling out. Um, that would be a good way to do it is to click on color swatches. So visit the online store, which is stampinup.com. You can also access that. And I always forget to share this little thing here by going to my blog, my website at stampyourartout.com. When you scroll down a little bit, there are these choices here. Clicking on my blog will take you over to seeing blog posts. Clicking here will take you to the store. So, um, so there you go. Now you're back in the store and you want to click on menu and use these little things here to help help yourself shop. Thank you for that question. Others that are coming up? Um, there's just some chatting back and forth, mostly about what people will miss and stuff like that. So. Okay. All right. Okay, super. Um, so here we go. We're going to start with boho blue. So boho blue, and I'll take this little thing off of there and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. You can see the hair on my arms, how lovely. <laughs> Boho blue, all the new colors I've marked with a little rhinestone because I don't have flat stickers. Stampin' Up! doesn't sell flat stickers. So um, they might fall off throughout this live, <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. Um, Boho blue, anything that's got a little rhinestone on it is a, a newish color, okay? Again, Fresh Freesia, it's got both, current and new. All right. <laughs> okay, here we go. 
boho blue. <laughs> boho blue compared to, let's just take brocade blue because I think that that one's pretty darn close. Boho blue and brocade blue, you can see that brocade blue is a little more uh, violet tin tinge to it. It's a little more purpley. Um, and you let me know if there's any comments that Brina might have said on some of those color comparisons oh, okay. too. Um, I like how I like how Brina said things like a little more orangish, a little more purplish. So Trisha might chime in and say certain things like that. But this one does have a more violent, uh, violent, <laughs> violet hue to it. It's a little darker. Then we have Buckaroo Blue, which is not as saturated. Did I use a word correctly? Nice. <laughs> Buckaroo Blue is more on the dusty side of blues, right? Uh, I use the word dusty <laughs> or bright. <laughs> Then we've got um, bordering blue. Bordering blue and boho blue are definitely not the same colors. As you can see, this one's grayer. But as far as intensity goes, they look like if they were black and white, like if they turned to black and white or, or you know, like a grayed out image on a TV, they'd look like they would be the same to me. We have marina mist, which has a more greenish tinge to it. It's a little um, on the warmer side, cooler side, right? Seaside Spray, I think, it's got a, all these dusty pieces on here. Seaside Spray, I think, would go really well with uh, Boho Blue. So any color swatch, like all of these that I'm sharing here that don't have a little orangish tab on them, they are like past colors. So all of these are past colors. Um, thank you, Rosemary. <laughs> um, these are all past colors. So if you don't have these colors, don't worry about trying to find them. I mean, they're... It's just for, this is basically helping people out that collect all the colors, right? If you still have some of this stuff. Um, and it's also to help you to see that Stampin' Up! is not duplicating any colors. None of the new colors are duplicates of colors that we've had before. Bliss Blue. Bliss Blue is definitely more on the um, brighter side. Um, then we have Boho Blue. And then here's Ballet Blue. Any other suggestions that we should do? Yeah, it's it's like a gray or blue. You're right, Shirley. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely like all of these that we've got here that we thought would be ones that you would call out are not are not the same. So let me know if there's other suggestions that you have. We're gonna Lisa and and Trisha and I will keep our eyes out to see if you have any other suggestions. Some of you are saying which colors you're going to miss. Like Tyra said, Pacific Point. It's, that was a really nice bright blue, wasn't it? You're going to love Azure. <laughs> Azure Afternoon. I'm saying it right. I'm saying it right. Yay. <laughs> High five to me. <laughs> That's a hard one. Oh, my gosh. I kept saying it wrong last night. Um, any others that we see popping up? Okay. So if you think of one and we have this delay there's like this 20 to 30 second delay so if you see um if you think of one that you want us to compare shout it out but say the color that you want us to compare it to because of that delay so oh kathy i like how she uh, called it a french blue i i like that that's a good yes, description of it moonlight. oh misty moonlight somebody said misty moonlight those two would go well together misty moonlight is one that is coming back by the way it has a little diamondy thing on it so you could pair those up together in projects thank you for that and dapper denim was suggested dapper denim there we go thank you katie and kathy for suggesting those awesome any others that you can think of so when you suggest these by the way suggest them and say boho blue compared to or versus or something okay here is Bashful Blue. Thanks, Terry. All right. How does it compare to the current colors? Well, um, the current colors, there's uh, tons of them. So can you tell us any specific ones? This is a current, or going to be current again, Boho Blue and, and Misty Moonlight. So Balmy Blue, Balmy Blue was suggested. Do you have that one? To Not Quite Navy. Wow, they want to compare them to darker colors. I'm thinking it's because of coordination, right? Not quite navy and balmy blue. She's pulling those aside. Now, when I do my comparisons on my blog tomorrow, I'm not going to pull all of these up, just so you know. <laughs> just the closest ones. In the past, I've tried to photograph all of them, but um, this is balmy blue and boho blue. 
but um, it, that gets to be a lot of work. But hopefully you're getting the ideas here. Not quite Navy, Night, do you? Night of the, oh, not quite? Not quite Navy, yeah. That was one other. Thank you for these suggestions. And Bonnie says, thumbs up. Thank you. There's not quite Navy. Definitely more of a um, greener kind of blue, I would say. Not as cool, warmer. And boho is definitely on the cooler tones. Okay. Thanks so much. Okay, so we're going to move um, boho blue out of the way. <clears throat> I'm going to hand you this pile in case we have to refer to them again mm -hmm. in a future thingy. Okay, let's grab Moody, Moody Mauve. <clears throat> Moody Mauve, don't you love that name? Moody Mauve. How is the coloring? I hope the lighting's okay. It looks like it's okay. Last night the coloring wasn't that, was that great, and I wonder if it was just the broadcasting system we were using. I don't know. But I think we have plenty of light, right? Moody Mauve. Here we go. Sweet Sugar Plum was pretty close as far as coordination goes, but you can see that this is like a lighter version of Moody Mauve. Um, it looks like they would coordinate really well, doesn't it? So Sweet Sugar Plum, obviously an older color because it doesn't have the orange tab on it. We have Rococo Rose. Those look like they could go together too, don't they? Depends, because the Moody Mauve, it's kind of like that crumb cake color where there's a little bit of like flecks of light and dark in the cardstock. It's kind of an interesting looking um, cardstock. You can see the, the multiples that make it up. It's, I don't know, have you ever looked at crumb cake really close? It's, it's different. It's got kind of a textury look to it, doesn't it? Um, then we've got Primrose Petals. Hello, Michaela from Austria. It's so fun to see people chime in from other parts of the globe. <laughs> Primrose Petals. There's the comparison there. Definitely more purple. And you know what? It's interesting too when colors are next to each other, how they look completely different. Like this Moody Mauve now looks so um, purple and um, more neutral than it did when it was next to Sweet Sugar Plum. Now all of a sudden it looks a little deeper and stronger. I don't know. It's weird. It's kind of, kind of makes it settle down a bit. Then we've got Perfect Plum. Perfect Plum. <laughs> Hi, Carol from West Michigan. Love the green heart. <laughs> there, Bravo Burgundy and the other Burgundy. I'm going to pull those two colors up. So Bravo Burgundy and Baroque Burgundy, depending. Like you could use either one of those past colors with this and have a nice coordination going on, couldn't you? <laughs> Hi, Vey. <laughs> it's okay if you're late. There's always the chance to rewatch it, right? Moody Mob. Okay, so Tr um, Tracy, Tracy Carter just said, Moody Mob is a flashback to the 80s. And wouldn't you say that Boho Blue is kind of a flashback too? So when we got our house back um, when the kids were little, Luke hadn't even been born yet. Um, so we bought it 16 years ago, 16 plus, 17 years ago. This was throughout the whole entire house. The house was built in 1989. So this was trending towards the end of the um, 80s, and this was definitely 80s also. But yeah, things come around, don't they? So there's Mauve Mist and Moody Mauve. Also a great pairing if you wanted to have kind of a pinkish tone with that. This could be kind of a neutral if it ever came back again. It's interesting how it pairs with so many colors. And I don't know if it's because it's got the little flecky look to it, like, um, crumb cake or what, but I, when I'm putting these together with some of these other colors, I'm like, wow, it's a good compliment. Here's rose red, definitely different, right? Other suggestions you guys might have, this is the last one that I pulled out that I thought might be ones that you shout out for. Um, Sweet Sugar Plum, we did compare already. I see that one has been called out. Any others that you want me to compare? I'll just set these right here so you can see the names of them. <laughs> this is so fun we're all together in my house <laughs> and you're all sharing your ideas and your thoughts thank you you guys this is really helping holly had those colors in her house in the 80s yep i think i don't know if we did oh fresh fig that was a good suggestion Ooh, i like those two together too mm -hmm. yeah kind of kind of a good pairing there I should tell Stampin' Up! that this could become a neutral in the future. Did you notice, too, that the... Um, actually, we'll just keep it right down here. Sorry, that's a good idea. Um, 
Um, Trisha, by the way, your face can be in here if you want to say hi to everybody. <laughs> I can say hi. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, did you notice that all the colors that are coming back are colors that are from In Color Collections? So I'm not sure if in the future, I mean, I'm not going to say that they wouldn't do this, but if they're bringing back colors from temporary collections, like the In Color Collections, my guess is that something like Raz Razzleberry, Rich Razzleberry, because it's become a core color for a while, is not ever going to come back. But who knows? I mean, there's infinity and beyond, right? So who knows what will happen in the future? But I think it's interesting that uh, they're all from In Color Collections. Any other color yeah, suggestions? Very bliss. Highland Heather. Does mauve blend with Highland Heather? Um, there's Blackberry Bliss. Oh, my gosh. Moody Mauve goes with so many colors, you guys. Um, Bravo Burgundy and Broke Burgundy we have here. Oh, now you guys are color suggesting colors that will pair up together. I'm seeing some of those. Yeah. Blushing Bride and Pear Pizzazz. Oh, you're just mourning the loss of them, Deb. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So any more? I don't, yeah, I don't think so. People are saying hello to each other, though. That's mm -hmm. kind of fun. <laughs> we get to know each other, don't we? All right, so I'm going to pull these off the screen, and we're going to move to the next set. Um, oopsie. Okay, we're going to move to Wild Wheat. So Wild Wheat. Um, these are the thoughts we had on Wild Wheat. I'm going to pull the ones that are more... These are kind of brownish. Wild Wheat is another in color that's coming in compared to Summer Star Fruit. Remember that one? Now, I used to think of this one as a really kind of pukey color, but again, when you pair it with something, it might brighten up. I really didn't like this one for a long time, but I know a lot of people didn't like Mango Melody for a long time too. It's when you combine it and you use it with other colors that colors can come to life. Um, always refer to like, Color Suggestions from Designer Series Paper Packs. Those are always a great way to go. Um, yeah, and I know that there's websites out there too that give color suggestions. So thank you, Kathleen. Yes, my new stamp set's on page 96, but we're not talking about that today. Okay, Wild Wheat and Summer Star Fruit would actually be a really good pairing, I think, if you still have that one around. And I think of this color, like some people said, oh, I'm not so sure I like that one, but I think of this color as a good gold. Like it's, it's a goldish color. Like if you're going to use, if you want to replicate a metallic kind of tinge to your project, you can use wild wheat and have that without using up foil or something. It um, really looks like it, it could be green in a field. It does. It looks like it could be a greenish color in a field. Is that what you said? Green. Green. green yes. And now I'm bringing in green. Because <laughs> this is a green Those that a lot of people were, they, yeah, they do not look good together, but they're pretty close as far as, um, yeah, on the yeah, as far as comparisons go, like, you know, they've, yeah, as far as that chart goes that Brina makes, I'm thinking that, was this one that she suggested? Kiwi Kiss. Or maybe she didn't suggest this one. She said that's one. darker, but it, they are close, yeah. They are the close, mm -hmm. yeah. They're a seven difference from each other, you guys. Like, Brina is amazing, this whole scientific mathematical thingy she's got this chart and she compares them on a scale so these colors are a seven away from each other which um, the closer you get the less distinguishable colors are t to the naked eye so if you have a one even though the colors are totally different the naked eye might not even be able to see the difference um, yeah these are a seven that's pretty close then we have hello honey so we're going to bring in some goldish colors now. That really makes wild wheat kind of disappear. Hello Honey is just so bright. So bright. And then we have more mustard. This looks totally orangish. This looks totally greenish when they're side by side, right? Old Olive. I saw that suggestion. Um, we do have Old Olive. But it's in a different stack. <laughs> it was in a different stack. Oh, look at that. Old Olive. When there, Did she mention, did Brina mention that one? Um, more yellow than old olive. Okay, it's a 10 difference though, just so mm -hmm. you know. This is definitely more yellow, yep. But they're a difference of 10 from each other. So they are close. Then we've got Delightful Dijon, which is a goldish color as well. 
Okay, getting to the browner side, true time. True time. Never seen the wheat color in your life. Yeah, well, you may have seen it, except maybe it wasn't called wild wheat. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, it's definitely a unique color. It is. It's not one that you would gravitate towards typically because of the, um, you know, it's not bright, right? Tend, we tend to gravitate towards bright or pastels or regals more so than the ones that tend to be more background colors. And then we have baked brown sugar. Did she mention that one? Because those look really close too. They are eight. Yeah. They're an eight from each other. Browner, greener, or yellower, however you want to call that. And somebody suggested Mellow Moss. Trisha, I love you being here. <laughs> <laughs> it's going quicker for finding these colors. How about River Rock? Do you have River Rock with you? I do. That was a good suggestion, Deborah. It is inter interesting, yes. Very interesting. It's a good fall color. Here's River Rock. Oh, they look pretty good. As far as like together. Just layer them like that. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> kind of brings out the green in this one. Okay. Any other suggestions? All righty. Um, new colors compared to boho, blue, balmy, navy, lost lagoon, blueberry bushel. Oh gosh, Tammy, you're giving us a big list. <laughs> um, maybe Trisha can deal with getting that together. I'm not sure yeah. if we'll have time, but um, we're trying to compare nice colors that are closest, but we might have time to pull in that stuff. Um, alrighty, I'm going to hand now, these back over. Someone asked for wild wasabi. I can pull that. I think oh, the wild wasabi you saw must be on Facebook. Okay. Okay, we're going to look at wild wasabi yeah. really quick. And did we compare um, Rococo with, we did, didn't we? Yeah, we did compare Rococo mm -hmm. Rose with Moody Mauve. Mm -hmm. Yep. All righty, all righty, here we go. Um, and if you're calling out colors that we may have already compared, hopefully, then um, just make sure that you watch the replay. All right, here we go. Next set of colors is Copper Clay. And we might have to pull from this stack too. So that one had um, a couple current colors too in there, like Pecan Pie I'm gonna pull over right now because that's a current color. And there might be some from this pile. So here's Pecan Pie, which are both, these are both new colors. Pecan Pie to Copper Clay are pretty cool, pretty close together as well. One's more on the reddish side and one's more on the yellowish side. Um, then we have, and I'll put that one down there. So we have a few that are okay. the, not in the stack. They're um, current colors. So okay. Pull those up let's compare it to, let's do really rust next. Here's really rust. Really rice, really rust is definitely a brighter color. Um, brightness or the value is higher. <laughs> I'm looking at my little sheet over there that uses technical terms. The value is higher on the really rust. It's a brighter color. But they go well, don't they? Um, let's try terracotta tile. Ooh, definitely very pinkish and brightish and mm, yeah, not so much. Um, ruby red might be something that you'd suggest just because copper clay does have a reddish tone to it. Then we've got Dusty Durango. That sounds like a cartoon. Dusty Durango, or a cartoon character. Close to Coco. I think these are supposedly pretty close on the chart, too. Yeah. Yeah. After Clay Ruby, Red Terracotta Tile, Really Rust. I think we got all of them. Are they all in there? Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I asked, yeah, because I said Pecan Pie. So we have all six. Oh, there's one more, isn't there? I feel like we're missing. Do you have Ruby? You have Ruby? Yeah. Terracotta, Really Rust, Dusty Durango, Cajun Craze, Pecan Pie, Close to Coco. Cajun Craze. Okay. okay. That's what I'm missing. Do you have Cajun Craze or I should do. I pull it? Okay. Her stack is, is getting a little harder to handle. <laughs> it's hard to find all these colors really quick, which is why I'm so glad she's here. Plus, she's smart. It's not in she's... alphabetical. 
that spot. There it is. <laughs> there we go. Cajun craze. Oh yeah, those are super close comparisons. Okay. Dusty Durango, name for an SUV. Love it, Sally. <laughs> All right, so there's Cajun Craze, Katie. Thank you for calling that one out. Um, Melissa says, some of us have been using Stampin' Up! for 30 years. It is fun to see how the older colors compare, isn't it? Especially if you do collect the colors. Chocolate, cinnamon cider. Um, what chart are you using? Can we get it? Uh, I'm going to link you to Brina's post, which is definitely a nice thing to look at. But I'll also have some things in my blog post tomorrow that will help you out. So cinnamon cider, I think was suggested. Mm -hmm. Copper clay. All right, to cinnamon cider. I'm trying to look to see what that other one was suggested. And the chocolate color, chocolate chip. Cinnamon cider, here's cinnamon cider. That's a great suggestion. Some of these I should probably write down. Cinnamon cider and copper clay. Here, we'll lay it over like that so it's easier. Because this kind of disappears when it's behind it like that, doesn't it? Cinnamon cider and copper clay. And here's chocolate chip. Definitely darker, but oh so yummy. Look at, I mean, you could make some definitely nice treats with that, you know, like a, um, a, a card with chocolates on it or something. Okay, so we're gonna push those aside. It's getting messier, isn't it? <laughs> Some of the colors are pulled for other stacks. Yes, they are. All right, so let's go on to the last of the in colors. This one's called Pebbled Path. Pebbled Path is um, a very nice color that could be a neutral in the future as well. I love this gray. It's a warm gray. Um, it's definitely like a nice stone color. I like they call it Pebbled Path. I think that's totally appropriate. So we're gonna take a look at that. These are the ones that were paired up with that. Okay, awesome. Pebbled Path with um, Basic Gray. Do you have Basic Gray? Then yes. I don't know. Okay. If I don't have to pull from these, then we might be able to do something at the end where we pull them all together. So I'm gonna to stop touching these, even though I want to. <laughs> shove those aside a bit. Okay, so we're gonna look at Pebbled Path with Tip Top Taupe. That's a fun comparison, right? They look pretty good together, by the way, in person and on the camera. <laughs> um, here is basic gray, and basic gray is really close on the chart, by the way. Um, I think this was the one that Brina said was uh, a small number. You can tell this is cooler, got a more bluish tone to it. This one is more on the redder, tones are warmer, warmer versus cooler, right? Um, then we've got, let's see here, let's do soft suede next. There's soft suede and pebbled path. They also have that look of if, you know, everything went black and white and gray, like if we went to a black and white TV, that these would disappear into each other. And then you've got going gray. Going gray is a little on the um, cooler side. So I would definitely not say that they would go well together as far as like going well together. This one I would choose more so than this, but yeah. Okay, and then we've got some colors that are... Get these on your list too. Oh, I had those on my list too. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Okay, gray granite. Oh, gray granite. There we go. There's our pairing. And this is a current color and will stay current. So gray granite and pebbled path. Nice combination. Um, crumb cake. There's crumb cake. Not so much. <laughs> um, close to cocoa. There's a comparison of close to cocoa and pebbled path. Definitely brown versus gray. I mean, if you were going to categorize them, right? And then, um, to see that one. Smoky slate. I don't know if these were on the list. Were no, they? someone okay. just asked to see that. Smoky. Oh, Thank they you, asked to see it. Okay. On your list. Did they ask to see it with the last one? The last color, I bet. I bet that's what it was with copper clay. So there's smoky slate. Okay, I'm going to bring back copper clay because these were suggested to pair up with Ooh. copper clay. And I don't know if we had those before. But here's um, creamy caramel and cinnamon cider. 
there we go yellower oranger those those look nice together creamy caramel and copper clay I like that okay all right I'm gonna give you these colors back good luck getting those back mm -hmm. in alphabetical order <laughs> Okay, so that is the new line of the 2023 through 25 in color collection Boho Blue Moody Mauve Wild Wheat Copper Clay Pebbled Path. It's going to be a slightly longer live than normal. I hope you guys are okay with that, but hopefully, you're getting some good information. We're going to move on to the um, new colors Azure. I'm sorry, I said it wrong already. Azure Afternoon Bubble Bath. Lemon Lolly and Pecan Pie. Let's start with Pecan Pie just because we're in the browns. Pecan Pie with Soft Suede. Oh, yeah. And I think, yeah, that's good. Thank you. There's Pecan Pie with Soft Suede. Oh, they're super close. wonder what number they are. Pecan Pie and Soft, soft suede. suede. Nine, more orange. A nine, okay. A nine. A nine difference. This one looks greener. This one looks oranger. Yep. Um, then we had Close to Coco. There's Close to Coco. And some of these colors we can pull from here, yeah. too, instead yeah. of... Okay. So Close to Coco is pretty darn close. I want to say that's even closer than the Soft Suede, but maybe not as far as numbers go. Seven? That's a seven. Wait. Which are you on? Uh, pecan oh. pie and, and close to cocoa. Close to cocoa. Is, oh, 10. Sorry. Oh, a 10. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Sorry, I should keep these out here. Um, the next one is copper clay. That one was over here. <clears throat> there we go. We already compared the difference of those. And then we have... And I think uh, everything else is in that. Okay. Line. Really rust. Definitely uh, orangier. This makes this almost look green when it's next to it. Claudia wants to see pecan pie with es espresso. Hmm. <laughs> okay, um, we'll see if we can pull that. Um, how about with cinnamon cider? Okay, cinnamon cider, and then I had baked, brought there this one, and creamy caramel, okay. So these two look pretty close too, don't they? But greener, oranger. Then we've got creamy caramel, definitely much lighter, much pinker. This is baked brown sugar. You'd think that they would have been the same, but not. <laughs> and here's the espresso comparison. I think those would look really nice together. Yeah, early espresso is one of those colors too that I think pairs up nicely with so many colors. So pecan pie and early espresso, great suggestion, Claudia. Um, pecan pie with creamy caramel. Yep, we did that one. And we did baked brown sugar. All right. I like them. The wild wheat actually looks bright when you hold all the colors together. I know, right? It's interesting, Renee, how when you pair them up with other colors, they just change. They brighten or dim or whatever. So uh, pale papaya was a suggestion. There we go. Pecan pie and pale papaya. <laughs> Barbie is loving the new colors. I am too. You know, it just it's nice to just have that refresh of of I you know, products that you could choose from too, you know. So, it's good. Pecan and wheat. Pecan and wheat. Let me try that one. There you go. There's pecan and wheat. All right. Let's look at lemon lolly. Is that the next yeah. one on the list? Okay. So, I'm going to move these back into this row here give those back to you and we'll go with lemon lolly so with lemon lolly i did not pull up past colors and i'm so sorry about okay. that i did tell you that i wasn't going to do that yet right um, or did I that's okay you? i'll go as i yeah, okay she's she's going to work super fast she's going to be the one sweating <laughs> trisha's going to be the one sweating at the end of this video we're going to pull up past colors and they don't have to be in order by the way okay so let's look at um, let's first look at one that you'd think would be comparable. Um, Barely Banana is probably our palest yellow that we've had um, in the past. But compared to Lemon Lolly, Lemon Lolly is even paler. Like it's closer to that white. This is um, definitely a brighter color. This one's duller, um, has more 
grayish, you know, little tinge to it so it's not as bright. I am loving this. This is just an amazing color. It's, I could even see it being used as a neutral. Like if you needed to have a neutral on a card and you didn't want to pick white or vanilla, pull out some of those pale colors like pool party, lemon lolly, um, bubble bath. You know, it's kind of fun to change it up and just pick a light color instead of just a white or a vanilla. So there's Barely Banana. Now we're going to pull in another color that you'd think might have been nice and light. And these two would go well together, Pineapple Punch and Lemon Lolly. But um, definitely darker. You know, it's got more... And that would be Chroma Saturation. <laughs> no, it's... it's um, it's, uh, yeah, is that it? Saturation? Anyways. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so more intense. It's almost like this is a pastel version of this one, right? Then we've got yellow, yellow. And in the live that we did last night, I really don't feel like this yo yo yellow was as crisp. Oh, no, I was thinking of Daffodil Delight. That's what it was. Well, when we come to Daffodil Delight, you're going to be like, wow, that's not as bright as I thought it was. In fact, let's bring that one in right now. Daffodil Delight. It's almost kind of orangey, you know? It's definitely not a bright yellow. when you, We thought it was when it came in, but... Um, Patricia loves the Lemon Lolly as well. And I just love the name, Lemon Lolly. Um, okay, let's move to some that are kind of on the orangier side, but still like saffron, so saffron. This one's disappearing. This is a current color that may have already sold out. Who knows? I don't know. you got to look at the online store. Can't keep up. Um, here's Apricot Appeal if you want to go even further with a comparison there. And then we have colors that, I don't know, some of you might have might suggest, but um, like River Rock, that was an older color. Um, definitely not a yellow, but it had a yellowish tinge to it. It was a neutral. And then you have a couple greens like Lemon Lime Twist. Um, this is a returning color and Lemon Lolly. There's that combination together. And then we have certainly Celery. Oh, someone wants us to compare it to Very Vanilla. Yep. That's a great idea. Okay, and here's a comparison to Very Vanilla. There we go. Good milkshake color, Tyra says. Love it. I miss chocolate chip too, Patricia. I thought it was a really good color. Thank you, Jean. Chocolate chip was a good one. Okay, are we moving on to another comparison? Thank you for the suggestions. You, you guys, this is so nice to have a live audience because it's helping everybody to compare even better when you call out suggestions. So I appreciate that so very much. I'll stick that one back there. And I'll put these over here in case you want to pull from any of them. All right, Lemon Lolly and Pecan Pie, two of the four new core colors. Let's do Bubble Bath next. Okay. We need Moth Mist. And there might be some in here, right. too. I'm not sure. Probably. Let's see. Oh, I got Moth Mist. Or do you have it already? Nope. Okay. So here's Moth Mist and Bubble Bath. I like that pairing. I think that's really nice. Um, Moth Mist, super old color. It was really hard to even get my hands on this one. I think Karen might have helped me with this one. But this is Mauve Mist, and it looks gorgeous with Bubble Bath, you guys. Um, they just, because Bubble Bath has got it, it's got a kind of, um, la, la, la. it's got a, um, <laughs> a real cool tone to it. It's not a warm pink. It's a cooler pink, so it's got a little purple tinge or violet tinge to it. And with the Mauve Mist, yum. Now let's just take a look at this combination. Oh my gosh. So if you have some mauve mist, pull in your moody mauve and new bubble bath. Pull in those two new colors and bring that mauve mist back out. <laughs> it's gorgeous together. Okay, there's mauve mist. Um, pretty in pink. We'll do that one next. That was a nice light pink, but it was definitely on the warmer side. And Tyra says she could see the lemon lolly being used with the daisies. We have new daisy images coming in. Yes, I can see that too. Here is pale plum, so a light, light, light purple, but definitely more on the grayer side. Um, there we go. And then we have pink pirouette, which is what some of you may have said is probably the closest. So this one, 
um, was a nice light, light pink. Probably the lightest that we had. Oh, powder pink was light too, right? Powder pink is current, right? Yeah. Powder pink is current? I think so. <laughs> It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Powder pink. That's what happens to your brains. Yeah. You start like forgetting what's current and what's not. But pink pirouette is one that has retired and I missed it, missed it, missed it. But look at this. I mean, baby pink, baby pink. Just this one has a little warmer tone to it and this one has a cooler tone. So um, both really pretty colors. Purple posy. So if you're looking at a really, really light purple, this one's definitely more purple um, than this one. Then we have powder pink, which is current, sticking around. But look how orangish it looks now compared to the uh, bubble bath color. And then we also have blushing bride, which is leaving and definitely not as pink looking anymore as bubble bath. And then we have fresh freesia, which is staying. It's leaving and coming back, going through the revolving door. <clears throat> Sweet Sugar Plum was a suggestion. Let's see if I can find that one. I think that one's in here. Here it is. There's Sweet Sh Oh, that looks good. That looks good together, Patty. What a great uh, suggestion for a combination. Sweet Sugar Plum and Bubble Bath look really nice together. They're, of course, not comparable. It's like, nothing is the same as Bubble Bath, right? So there's a couple these suggestions. Are, these are a couple suggestions. Um, Flirty Flamingo. Mm, nah. <laughs> I don't like those two together. Here's our current light pink. Oh, petal pink. Oh, powder Which pink totally is... totally doesn't look the same. Yeah, powder <laughs> pink is not current. Sorry, I lied. Um, powder pink is retired. Yeah, because that's why I don't have a little thing on it, right? <laughs> petal pink is our current one, and this one does look what? It doesn't look at all pink next to bubble bath. It doesn't. It looks <laughs> almost like orange. Peach. Yeah, yeah, peachy color. Yeah, it's a very light peachy look. And then this is Rococo Rose with bubble bath. That is pretty. That's really nice. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to rewatch this video to write down suggestions <laughs> of what I'm going to pair up when I do my blog post tomorrow, <laughs> which is why I'm not going to post it right away, you guys, because that's, um, there's a lot of after work to do that I'm going to prepare so that you have a really nice reference to go back to on my blog. And again, my blog is stamp your art out at comcast.net. And said, what about daffodil delight? I'm not sure about Daffodil Delight? That's a yellow. <laughs> maybe, maybe they were talking about what it'd coordinate with. Oh, it maybe with Lemon Lolly? With that, yes, but, mm. but we're not going to plot. We're going on the next color. Okay. Um, Azure Afternoon. Azure Afternoon is next. Azure Afternoon is a nice bright blue. So, oh, we got kind of a... What happened there? There we go. That was weird. Did you see that, everybody? It was kind of like hazy for a minute. Azure Afternoon. Maybe Azure Afternoon brought in some fog for a little brief moment. Azure Afternoon, I didn't pair up with a lot of colors initially, but you guys might throw out some suggestions to us. So um, I don't know why I didn't have a lot of suggestions immediately, but we will pull in. Let's pull in Marina Mist. That looks pretty close. In fact, I think this one scientifically Yeah, it just has was... two listed here. Marina Mist is an eight. An eight comparison More from Brina. Red. Yeah. And then Tahitian Tide was an 11 comparison. Mm -hmm. So kind of cool to see those combina or those um, comparisons. We have Tempting Turquoise. I have that one here oh. if you want me to use that. Tempting Turquoise. I don't want you to dis dis and, you know, assemble your whole... <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a good reference thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then I'll just pull in some, a few other... Oh, here. Tahitian, oh, you got Tahitian Tide, okay, and then we have um, maybe Ballet Blue, Ballet Blue with um, Azure Afternoon, this is definitely more violet, has a more violet tinge to it, um, a reddish tinge, I would say, leaning towards that kind of violet, but this is a nice cool blue, it's really beautiful in person, hey, when I tilt it towards the light, it looks better, doesn't it, that's Azure Afternoon. Someone has a, let's see, Rosemary Johnson, Azure like pleasure for pronunciation. Pleasure, Azure, pleasure, pleasure, Azure. That helps. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know why I keep saying Azure. Is that like French or something? I don't know. Um, Island Indigo. Not so much. I'm not liking that combination. <laughs> um, Dapper Denim with Azure Afternoon. 
Hmm. In the camera it looks good, but this does look greener in person. So I don't know if I can, like, I don't know if I would put those two together. And then here's Bliss Blue. That looks really nice. Bliss Blue is long gone though. What about Bashful Blue? Do we have that one? Bashful Blue is going to be, yeah. is a current one, right? Bash, no. no, Bashful, this no. is the current one. No, this is not the current one. What's the current one? Balmy Blue. <laughs> Balmy Blue is the current blue. I guess I'd like to see that one if you okay. have that. Yes. And then, um, I like those two together though. Bliss Blue and Azure Afternoon. And then here's Balmy Blue. Oh gosh, no, don't put those two together. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is Bashful Blue, which also looks good. An older color. Um, that one looks good with Azure Afternoon. You want to see it with Brilliant Blue. That's a really old one. With Brilliant Blue. Brilliant Blue. Oh, yes. Brilliant blue. I can see that totally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, blueberry bushel. Here, I have that Pacific right here. Point. There's blueberry. Oh, blueberry bushel and Azure Afternoon look awesome together for um, some comparisons. And I think I probably have Pacific Point in here oh, somewhere. Oh, it was up. Oh, no, Is we it, don't have oh, it up. Oh, okay. Because that one's leaving, so I think I gave it oh. to you in a... It's in a stack. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in my hoe, here. There we go. Oh. I've got it. Here we go. Pacific Point and Azure Afternoon. I guess I would pair it more with Blueberry Bushel because this is warmer. This looks, I mean, in ca on the camera, it looks pretty good, but in person, I don't know. This, hey, maybe, maybe. Boho Blue. Boho Blue? Boho. It should be, is it a? Oh, the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, which one is Boho Blue? <laughs> Nah. Boho looks really gray next to that. It does. It looks grayed out. Yeah, no. Starry Sky and Orchid Oasis with Azure Afternoon. Okay, you guys are con suggesting like... Coordinating. Not coordinating colors. <laughs> this can be like, yeah, this might take <laughs> us a while. Um, I think we're going to move on to the next color, but this was good. Uh, you guys are awesome. Let's go to, actually, you know what? Let's just take that really quick because I called it out, so I might as well help out with that one. Those are the other suggestions, and I forgot who it was. The, oh, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Starry Sky, Orchid Oasis, and Azure Afternoon, all going to be current. So, okay, let's move to the next one. So we did the new core colors coming in. We did the new in colors coming in. And now let's see if we can tidy this mess and go on to returning colors. Now returning colors, I'm not gonna spend as much time on um, because we've done these colors in past, in the past lives. And what I've done on my blog post is I have um, connected a little link to, sorry, I'm looking over here, yeah. lemon lime twist. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I've done a little um, link to those past comparisons. So we'll just do a couple that seem pretty close um, just to save you guys some time and make sure that you eat lunch because we don't want to <laughs> keep you here all day. But these again, you can click on my blog post tomorrow and it'll link you back to past comparisons. We'll focus on maybe like newer colors. Okay, um, you wanna pair Parakeet Party? Yeah, let's do Parakeet Party. That one is current and will remain current. So Parakeet Party and Lemon Lime Twist. These are going to both be current. So you can see that you've got some nice bright greens to choose from. This one's cooler, this is warmer, more yellowish, more um, bluish if you want to put some kind of tone in, uh, undertone in there. Um, does she have that one compared to? She has it compared. Luscious Lime is the closest, and I'm not finding my Luscious, luscious Lime. Luscious Lime. Okay, I might have that one here. Luscious Lime. We haven't pulled that for another comparison, have we? I don't think so. I'm not sure where it is. We're both going to do a quick look here. Oh, I got two colors that we can pull out. So here's Luscious Lime. Now they look great together and they're also um, the closest as far as Brina's numbers go. So um, so I would say Luscious Lime if you have that one still and Lemon Lime Twist. This is a color that has been really hard to find. 
So I would love another sample of that one. Actually, a sample of that. Yeah, uh, we need two. We need two. <laughs> maybe, maybe three. No, we'd love a whole sheet of this. <laughs> if you have a piece of luscious lime and rocket red is the other yes. color. Yeah, rocket red. And I think I had another one, magenta madness or something. Ooh. But um, those colors would be awesome because they're so hard to find. Luscious lime with lemon lime twists are like, oh, you just want to eat them. They're so good. And then we have um, lucky limeade with lemon lime twist also a great pairing i would say um this could be like a nice neutral layer underneath it okay oh i should keep those out sorry keep those out rachel um, pear pizzazz was suggested um, okay. i think that's in the oh here. my list yeah. since it's a fairly current color yeah Just and then we'll look that. at lemon lolly next okay. to it too oh yeah that one and maybe there. granny apple green because that might not have been well it might have been around then Okay, so here's pear pizzazz and lemon lime twist. Definitely a difference. The pear pizzazz is leaving. I know some of us are sad. I know. I know that uh, Teresa Glow is sad about that. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, I love Granny Apple Green with lemon lime twist. That's just yummy. <laughs> but you guys know me. I'm a green gal. I love my greens. And here's lemon lolly. It's a yellow. But let's just look at those two together. Beauteous. Use those together. Okay. Um, all right, let's set those out of the way. I'm going to give you those cards back. Next color. Yep. And again, we're going through these quick. We're not going to do like suggestions with these just because I have past color suggestions, but we're trying to bring in some more recent ones with these in case these weren't compared in the past. Blueberry, which one are we doing next? Uh, berry Burst. Berry Burst. Berry Burst is next. All righty. Berry Burst. And I have a few sitting here, too, that we could probably All pull right. from. Marvelous Magenta is closest. Okay, Marvelous Magenta. We're going to bring in that, and I see one we that I one? know okay, that, that won't. Pull mine. Um, this is a different one, but I will pull oh. Marvelous. I can't realize. Um, you know what? I don't know if I have. Oh, here it is. It's very purple. It is very purple. <laughs> this is the closest? Yeah, that's what it says. It's a it's six. A six. It's wow. a six. They're very close to each other. This is definitely warmer. This is definitely cooler. Um, but if they got really close to each other, they would be inconceivable or not. What's the word that indistinguishable, indistinguishable, indistinguishable to the naked eye. <laughs> Marvelous magenta, old color. Okay. And then we have magenta madness, which is much brighter, <laughs> but I could definitely see those colors being used together. Um, rich razzleberry. Nice. Love that. That's a fun combination there. Definitely would use those together. I like the layering. Um, oh, and I'm putting these down. Sorry. You could, you could be glancing these at these all together. Two more on your list. Two more on the list. Okay. Here's lovely lipstick. And then the this one is definitely redder. Um, this is purely pomegranate, which kind of like blend into each other too. How close is that one to pure? Oh, purely pomegranate is a seven. Wow. Those are definitely close to each other. But you can see the difference when I move it back and forth on the light. Yeah. So there is berry burst. Awesome. Thank you. I say the word awesome way too much. I'll put that one over there. <laughs> Okay. Blueberry bushel. Blueberry bushel. All right. Let's look at blueberry bushel. And we'll bring in brilliant blue, I think, is the yeah. first one. Yeah. She's looking for it. <laughs> we need a bigger table. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant blue was from a long time ago. It was one that is very um, loved and missed by many. But if you are a brilliant blue fan look at the difference between these two so if you're going to say that any colors were exactly the same this might be the two that you choose these two according yeah. to her That's chart i think i think she said that they're yeah a four, four. Mm -hmm. a four that's how close they are to each other isn't that crazy because when you put them like this, they look like the same color. When you put them on top of each other, you can see the slight difference. You see that? This one almost has a little bit of green to it compared to Brilliant Blue. Okay, um, not quite navy. 
We're just bringing in some other colors here that may be thought, thought of as comparing. Um, we'll just look at uh, Night of Navy really quick here too, because this is a current color that will be staying. Those two I could see being used together. The Knight of Navy is in the Neutrals family. Here it is with Misty Moonlight. And then we have a couple other suggestions over here. It looks like Starry Sky. Oh yeah, that's a good suggestion. And then we have Midnight Muse, which is definitely greener. Okay. All right, that was fun. Oh my goodness sakes, there's so many color combinations. Okay, the next set. And again, go back to those links in the blog post for further comparisons on these last few colors because again, I've compared these before and we don't want to spend a ton of time on them. Let's go to Pretty Peacock next, or another returning color. And Pretty Peacock is from a little bit longer ago, I think. Um, I can't not remember. terrible long. Um... Look at that. Okay, so we're gonna go with early enough that we have blends still. A uh, true, we still have blends with that one. Lost Lagoon, we that one's probably the oldest of them, maybe. I don't know. That was an older one. Oh, that was the, yes. was the oldest. It was the oldest. Yeah. Back. Yeah, that one went back to 2014. So, okay. So, oh, we'll look at those together. We'll just compare those really quick. So Lost Lagoon and Pretty Peacock, if you have been paying attention to what's going on, on with um, Stampin' Up! products, you know that we have this online exclusive section in the online store. And when the color comparisons were first kind of hinted at, it's when a certain paper, I think it was called Hello Irresistible, it came out in the online store last month. And these two are in there. So it was like, boom, these colors are obviously coming back. And look how beautiful they, they look together. They're all, um, both used in those papers, too. So Lost Lagoon, here it is to Island Indigo. That's the closest There's the comparison. on the color chart. That's the closest on the chart, okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have, not quite navy. I'm going to grab that one first because it does have more of a greenish tinge to it. Wow, that's pretty cool together. Actually not. <laughs> they don't look good together. What they do look though is like they look like if you if you squint or if you do that black and white thing again They're just gonna blend into each other. So greener grayer Yeah, more 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 Tingy of like purple gray in that one. Here's dapper denim Dapper denim to pretty peacock um, Tranquil tide maybe Okay, and then here's Shaded Spruce. So if you're looking at greens, there's a green comparison. And, oops, that one goes in this pile. <laughs> so pretty peacock. Okay. Can't find Tranquil Tide. It's, We're looking for Tranquil Tide. Let's piles. see if we can find it in here. It was one listed on here, but. Here's Tranquil Tide. Oh, that's a good comparison. That was listed in her but comparison? This was listed on yours. Okay, so Tranquil Tide and Pretty Peacock. Those look pretty close too, but um, greener. More of a greener color, like a yellower green, you know. Warmer green, cooler green. All right, so there's Pretty Peacock. Let's move on to Lost Lagoon. And we can compare that one with Tranquil Tide. And obviously you saw them with these colors already, but... Lost Lagoon to Tranquil Tide, there's that combination. Um, Lost Lagoon to maybe something like Marina Mist, I don't know. What else do we have in there? Oh, Pool Party. Soft Succulent. Soft Is Succulent, oh list? yeah. Let's look at that one. Soft Succulent, there we go. Lost Lagoon and Soft Succulent. Soft Succulent is stain. It's an in color, it's gonna be around next year. This one has um, uh, a warmer shade to it, um, lighter, obviously. This one's a little deeper in color. I don't know if I would match them up, though. I don't know. They look like they're a little combative, combative, combative with each other. Oh, I shouldn't have put that one back because we were comparing it. Sorry, we'll set that one down there. Um, taken with teal. Wowza, very bright compared to Lost Lagoon. Um, pool party. Here's pool party. 
which is stain, right? That one's stain. Oh, those look nice. This one, I think this color was also in with the papers, wasn't it? Or maybe not. But I can see Lost Lagoon, Pretty Peacock, and Pool Party being used together in projects. Soft Succulent is retiring. Thank you. You're right, Marie. Sorry about that. Um, soft Succulent is retiring. Is it retiring? It's retiring. Yeah, it's an in part. Why did I put this pile here? This pile, this pile <laughs> here is, yeah, we're moving that over there. There we go. <laughs> but we can put Soft Succulent back in here. Thank you. <laughs> It's, it's hard to keep track of all these, you guys. Seriously. Let's try, um, let's try Bermuda Bay with Lost Lagoon. A lot different. Just Jade. Yeah. Way more greenish. Way more gray-blue. Okay. So there, I hope that helped with those colors. Let's, oh, and then here's the pool party. I put it off to the side. But yeah, I would say if you're going to do a combination of current colors, those three. Awesome. They look great. Let's move on to Misty Moonlight. Is that one next? Yes. Okay. I'm going to give those back to you. I'm going to stick these back over here. Oh, there's another one. Misty Moonlight. Misty Moonlight with... Orchid Oasis. Orchid Oasis. Oh, my goodness Oops. sakes. We're dropping things now. <laughs> we need more table space. Orchid Oasis. Orchid Oasis is in here. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> there we go. They must be close to each other because I listed yes, them it, first. Yes, it was the first one here. Um, six, but more cyan than Orchid Oasis. Okay. Pretty, pretty. Um, here's... Yeah, don't... Yeah. They don't, they're not even comparable, but they look good together. They just... Yeah. So there's Misty Moonlight. Here's Marina Mist. If you wanted to compare mists to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Misty Moonlight with... So, Belly, is it the point Lovely Lilac and Brocade here? Let me pull Lovely Lilac. That was a... Okay, I found Ballet Blue. Okay. And Let's Brocade Blue. I've got those two here. And here's Brocade Blue, which I think looks pretty good with Misty Moonlight, as far as, like, if you were going to combine some colors together. Lovely Lilac. It's more blue than Lovely Lilac. And they're a nine, mm -hmm. a nine difference, but th this is definitely more blue. This is more purple. Um, any others think? that we should pull out? So we want to see Night of Navy. Okay, and here's Blueberry Navy. Bushel with it. Okay. We might have compared that one already. Night of Navy. Night of Navy. Or Not Quite Navy might be a good comparison. I like those like two too. together. I think those yeah, would look nice together. they would together. look good together. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Oops, I keep putting things away. Stop putting things away, Rachel. All right. Yes, thank you. Oh, maybe I'm seeing the same comment. Yes, soft succulent is retiring. <laughs> Tyra, I agree. I love the 2022 through 23, or 24, 2022 through 24 in colors. The, they're, they were so bright and cheerful, right? So, and they're sticking around. We still have another year for them, so... All right, I'm going to set that one aside. We're going to move on to the so last ask one. About starry Sky. Oh, Starry Sky. One. Starry it Sky is in this stack top. here with Misty Moonlight. Okay. Little contrasting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and here was Not Quite Navy. Oops, I guess some, there's two cards there. Oh, Not Quite Grab Navy. There. there we go. Not Quite Navy is more greenish looking. Okay, so we're going to move those out of the way. Actually, we can hang on to these two. But I'll move these. Okay, let's bring in Fresh Freesia and do some comparisons. I think Orchid Opulence was one okay. that I had written on and there. we've got Pale Plum Mauve Mist. Oh, I found Pale Plum. All right. And I think Mauve Mist is in here too, yes. And okay. I also have Purple Posy, if that one's written on there. I don't know if it, it is. Is it? Isn't? Okay. That's okay. <laughs> All right, so um, here's Fresh Freesia with Orchid Opulence. Orchid Opulence was one of my colors that I was really really sad to see go now it's not like um green galore do you remember green galore i kept that ink pad that is an ink pad i will never give up <laughs> although granny apple green is pretty good and so is parakeet party but i love a bright crisp spring green and um orchid opulence may have been you know one of those colors kind of like mango melody where i would have kept the ink pad but 
I, I didn't, but yeah, orchid opulence, gotta love it. And look how nice it goes with fresh freesia. Those two are just really pretty together. This is the other orchid, not even close, right? But just wanted to bring that in. Here's lovely lilac. Here is pale plum, a pretty close comparison, I would say, with pale plum. Um, she says it's a six with pale plum. Mm -hmm. And it's a six a, with mauve mist. And a six with mauve mist. Here is mauve mist. Now, pale plum and mauve mist were really close to each other, and they were current at the same time, I believe. Yeah. These two are really close, too, aren't they? Yeah. And then we have purple posy. Any others that pretty we should... Pretty in pink. Pretty in pink. All right. Wisteria Wonder, somebody called out. Yeah, oh, yep, I pulled that one. Okay. Wisteria Wonder is such a gray purple, but I remember when it came in, we were all like, ooh. Because, you know, sometimes when you're in a certain collection, you're missing something. And now that Wisteria Wonder is gone, I feel like it's okay because we have all these other combinations. So it's, it's just interesting how the colors play on each other and what we need and what we don't need. Alrighty, so um, I'm going to now take the colors that are current and I'm going to move the colors that are not out of the way and we're going to look at how these colors that are returning or new are going to be combined into our families. Okay, so this family is going to stay the same. This is the 2022 through 24 in color collection. This is staying the same. In the um, regals, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colors now in the regals. And what we are going to do is bring in blueberry bushel into the regals. Sorry, I'm putting that down by my head. You can't see that. Can you? We'll put it on here. So blueberry bushel is going to become a regals color and pretty peacock is going to become a regals color. So does that give us 10? Let's count them. Let's count them really quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep. So that's your regals. For the neutrals, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We need two more neutrals, right? So we have night of navy, mossy, meadow, basic, gray, smoky, slate, um, early espresso crumb cake, gray granite, blackberry bliss, and we're bringing into the neutrals pecan pie and misty moonlight. So those are going to become neutrals. That's the new neutral family. And then for the subtles, <sighs> we're so done with this mess now, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> For the subtles, we have Highland Heather, Balmy Blue, Pool Party, Soft Sea Foam, Petal Pink, and Clipso Coral. So we need to fill in four gaps with the subtles. And the subtles are going to have Lost Lagoon. Oh, here it is. Lost Lagoon. That's going to be added to the subtles. We're also going to have, um, sorry, i got to look at my notes. Fresh Freesia will be part of the subtles. We'll also have Bubble Bath and Lemon Lolly. So these will round out the subtles. And then for the, oops, brights, we'll have Coastal Cabana, Granny Apple Green, Daffodil Delight, Flirty Flamingo, Melon Mambo, Poppy Parade, and Pumpkin Pie. That's seven colors. And to fill in the gaps of those, we'll have Azure Afternoon, Berry Burst and Lemon Lime Twist. Isn't this fun to see them all in new families? I mean, they're just looking so marvelous. And then of course we have our new in color line for 2023 through 25. Um, remember to purchase those retiring colors if there's anything that's retiring that you want. Um, also, let's see, I'm looking at my notes here. Refer to my blog post tomorrow. I'll try to get it live um, on my blog at stampyourartout.com as soon as I can. Uh, if I get it done tonight, it will post around 5 a.m. Central Time. If I don't get it done tonight, it will post later in the morning. <laughs> uh, let me think, what else? 
Um, next week, I'll go live uh, April 12th. What? That, that will be Wednesday, right? April 12th at 11 a.m. Central Time. Again, a big thank you to Trisha Josephs, who came in to help me with the live. I love you, Trisha. Um, she's so helpful. She's the one who does the moderating on YouTube, my YouTube videos, um, all the time. So, uh, But Lisa Marshall, thank you so much. Virtual hug to you, Lisa, for moderating on YouTube. And um, a big hug to all of you who that have helped with these color comparisons over the years. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, um, love your interaction. It just makes it more fun. Uh, Rewatch the live. It's about an hour and a half. And hopefully you can watch it in parts and pieces. And then you can get all the information that we shared. And I'm thinking that we have everything else. Thank you to Barina Bergen. Um, that's it. Uh, yeah. Right? Someone said, does retired mean never coming back? Not necessarily. <laughs> no, retired means it's going away for now um, because we've seen these in colors that have come back, right? So um, something that a lot of us have done when they've started to do these refreshes is we have um, saved colors. Um, Business-wise, I just I saved some past colors. I didn't save Lost Lagoon because that was before we ever did a refresh, but... Per, um, pretty Peacock I had in my stash. So when it came back with the Hello um, Irresistible Papers, I was like, oh my gosh, I still have that color and it's coming back. So it's up to you if you want to hang on to colors or not. It depends on, you know, are you a demonstrator? Are you a hobby demonstrator versus a business demonstrator? Are you a collector? You know what I mean? So do what works for you. And I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. Any other questions that have been coming up? A few people have asked about your stamp set. Oh, my stamp set. I can pull that out. Since it'll just take a minute? Yes, sure. it's over here. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me grab it. Um, where did I put it? <laughs> here it is. Here it is. This is my stamp set. Um, and when I say my, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about this first live, there are certain demonstrators that have reached milestones where they get to help design a stamp set. Um, it's, it's rare, so... Um, know that you know if you're going to sign up to be a demonstrator it takes a lot of work but um layering leaves is my million dollar sales stamp set and it has my name on it i'm so excited this stamp set is an all occasion uh type of stamp set it will be available may 2nd um and it coordinates with a punch can you tell which one <laughs> thank you for grabbing that it coordinates with the bow punch which i loved when it came into play because i missed the leaf punch which went away and as a paper pumpkin and kit creator, uh, not create, I don't create the kits, somebody who likes to make things with kits, I really feel that people who purchase kits tend to be those people that either, um, and not all of us, but people who want to, want to not own a lot or who are beginning crafters or crafters that are just kind of casual, you don't have to own it all. And with kits, it's easy. So those people enjoy getting kits and I wanted to make it even easier for them to have supplemental things for their kits. Leaves can go with so many things, not just flowers. And these words can help supplement any kits that you get that maybe are too specific. So you could turn a kit into a hello card, a sending hugs card, you know, so this is, that's basically my justification for wanting to have this set and really pushing hard for it. And I was so excited when we were able to make it work. So these images coordinate with the punch. It's a photopolymer, so it's easy to stamp with. You'll be able to see where you're stamping. And just a little other plug, I'm going to be having uh, an event um, through the mail type thing. So for those of you that live in the U.S., you'll be able to purchase some um, uh, purchase a pack of supplies to make cards with. It's going to be a class in the mail type thing. I uh, heard that Erica Sirwin did it and I asked her all about it. And so I'm going to do something similar where you can opt to have the layering leaves, the stamp set thrown into it that's autographed. So I know, silly, Ooh, weird, but no people one. have say, said that they wanted. So. <laughs> so watch for that towards the end of April. I'll have more information on that. Now we're going to say goodbye, right? Yes. Nothing and else? Links about the color charts will be in tomorrow's po blog post. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. All the links will be in tomorrow's blog post. Visit back. Thank you so much, everybody. All right. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye. <laughs>